My next guest had an awesome week last week. He picked up his first UFC victory. Of course, I'm talking about Modeskis Bukaukas joining me here on the program for the very first time. Modeskis, how are you, man? Yeah, doing very good. Thank you. Couldn't be better. How are you doing? I am doing awesome. Thanks for asking. Not everyone asks how I'm doing, so I, I appreciate that. But uh, it's my last interview of the day. Got to save the best for last. And uh, congratulations on the victory, like I mentioned off the top there. It must have been great. Now, I know you would have probably liked it to end a little bit differently, but uh, take me through that sequence at the end where you know the referee called the fight off. Did you know that the door was open when he fell backwards? What was sort of going through your head at that moment? Yeah, to, to be honest, I was getting ready to, to go for the second round. Like, I, I thought, okay, he's dazed. He's, he, like, you know, he's been hurt. He's on the floor holding his head. But I sort of didn't know, is he going to stand up? Is he not? He's gonna go. I thought, okay, they're probably going to bring him to this corner or whatever. But um, to be honest, I think there was a lot of emphasis on this whole door opening situation, which in my eyes, it didn't even need to be a, a highlight of a topic of conversation. I don't know why it was. Everyone seems to think because of the door, that's why he called, he called off the fight. No, it wasn't because the, the guy literally, uh, Daniel Moverhead, he done an amazing refereeing job. He asked the guy to stand up for about four or five times, did not stand up, stayed on the floor. And then he wanted to sit back on the cage, didn't realize the door was there and fell backwards. And then that's when he stopped the fight. But I'm like, okay, let's say even the door was closed and he leant back on the cage. Was he able to get back up to his feet? No. So... The, the point, you know, the, the, the point being, if you're unfit to fight, and you've only got a minute to recover and you're like that. And even when they brought the stool in, like for him to sit down, to get medically like, you know, to to be tended to, he was found it was wobbly and he was shaking. It's like there's no way he would have been fit to go on to the second round. So for me, it was like, you know, why, why was there emphasis on the door opening when it should be more emphasis on can the guy respond to the referee and can he get up and go to his corner? There, there would be no problem with this whole door opening situation if he would have just got up and went back to his corner. In, in, do you know what I mean? So, uh, listen, I, I tried, you know, obviously, like I say, I went up to him, I was, you know, saying good fight and stuff like that. Uh, and he, you know, sort of dazed and, you know, like, you know, obviously he'd been hit to the head a couple of times, you know, so he, he was still quite dazed. So, like I say, had it, you know, had it went to like the full minute of recovery, he wouldn't have been able to come out to the second round anyways. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought all that up because I, I was hoping that no one was going to take away the credit that, that you had in that fight because you look great. I mean, it was, it was a great first round, great performance. Um, and I was going to ask you about that actually, like leading in, like you've fought in cage warriors before you've been on the big stage. Were there any jitters this week going into the octagon or did it feel like uh, another fight for you? Do you know, it's weird. I thought I would have it, but I didn't. It, it was, it, I think I was so, not necessarily surprised because, you know, but I've just not been used to the level of care that they take for these UFC fighters. They make sure everyone knows exactly what's going on. They make sure everyone's 100% ready. Uh, they, they tell you everything, like, spot on. They've got, every, you've got everyone's numbers. You can see the physio. You can see the nutritionist. You you know, you everything gets done pro, like a professional athlete. How a professional athlete should be treated, this is how they treat you. So I think with that that being said, you know, when when I was walking out, you know, going into into the tunnel, getting ready to go out into the cage and, you know, hearing the guy, call, you know, count down before you walk out and you're going out into the UFC cage and this and that, it just it just felt like that's how it should be. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I fought on the big shows before, but, but this is like the biggest, like, you know, the best in the world. But like, you know, it just felt like natural. It's like what I've been wanting this whole time. And I think when you've got that mindset of, this is something I've been wanting since I was young. Like I, I wanted this whole moment, and this is my chance. Like I just embrace it. I just like I take it on full swing. I get excited, and it get, it gave me more excitement than anything just to be in that cage. Obviously, when, when you hear Bruce Buffer call out your name, and and you know you're wearing the UFC gloves, like everything, it just sort of felt like everything fell into place how I wanted to. And then as I got moving, and you and you get going, you get into the fight, and then. And then, like I say, it's all good. Obviously, you still have a bit of like nervous, you know, energy. It's just a bloody fight. You're you're not going to go in there without it. But at the end of the day, it just felt, it just felt like this is it. This this is where I wanted to be. And like you know, it just makes it's like a drug. Like you want to do it again. Like that's why I just, just want to get back in there, man. I, I love that experience so much. I just want to experience it again. Yeah, you felt at home. I, that's what, kind of what I'm hearing here. You felt like this is finally what everything that had lived up to, it lived up to it uh, heading into the cage, which was awesome. How was it fighting without a crowd? Because that was a first for you, right? Yeah, um, it just reminded me of the old sparring. Like, you know, when I went to Brazil the first time, just as I just turned pro and I was getting ready for my pro debut, I went out to Team Nogueras and, you know, you had like, 
a, a couple of the fighters and they all go around the cage and it's just two people in there at one time and you know that you've got a couple of people giving advice here and there but it's like literally it's like a it's like a backyard brawl like just you two going in there trying to knock each other's head off and the sparring so it so literally reminded me of that like you know like you're you're in a gym sort of setting but this was obviously just with a bit more you know you're under the lights and this and that but um it, it felt like normal like honestly if there was a crowd there it would have made no difference like i would have felt exactly the same to, like I generally i could have even pictured myself like even if there was a crowd i feel like there's just tunnel vision like it, it's sort of like the crowd like as much as it's amazing and like you know the, the fans is what makes the sport and stuff like that like you like as a fighter i think you just you sort of zone it out you either you know like work with it and play with it or you zone it out and i think i kind of do a little bit of both and uh uh yeah like i say it, it made no difference because at the end of the day you still got to go there go in there and do your thing and i think just the fact about even getting in the ufc on that ufc canvas uh to me just spoke volumes and uh uh yeah like i said i just can't wait to do it all over again anything surprised you at all about your opponent i mean it wasn't long but was there anything that you noticed in the fight where you're like maybe i didn't expect that or something he did that you weren't sure about yeah he just moved a bit better than that yeah, some people say I move really well, and he was more flat-footed. He he evaded shots a lot better than I thought he would. Like against his other opponents, he sort of stayed in the pocket a little bit more, and that's where he, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he landed his shots, and you know, but guys sort of stood in front of him a bit more, and you know, but he 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 sort of did, he evaded a lot better against me, and obviously it's a bigger cage, bigger than what we both of us were used to, so obviously gave him a bit more room to play with. Um, but yeah, so that sort of. Not to say that it threw me off, but it meant that I, that in the second round, I would definitely have to change my tactics. I can't just go, or, or, or I had to get in a little bit closer with the hands before I'd have to strike. So, you know, he moved a bit better than White. I knew he was an all-rounded fighter. I knew that coming in. Um, but, yeah, so if, if anything that, that, I, that I could say I could have done better, is probably just find that range and distancing a little bit better with the movement that I had. So credit to him, you know, amazing fighter. How has this past week been just with, you know, getting the win? I mean, you were a name that I heard a lot last week after that card just because of the performance you put on. And I think there's a lot of excitement about you being added to a division that, frankly, needs some more life in there, some new up-and-comers, some new talent. Uh, how has that been just, you know, receiving all that after the win? Yeah, it was, mate, like, you know, speaking to, like, Megan O'Leary, Lawrence, Laura Sanko, you know, um, you, you you got all these other, like, big-time big, big time guys, and you, and you had Michael Bisping talking about you and, 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 and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, I had, um, you know, John Anik as well got to speak to and Paul Felder. Like, the whole week in itself, like, it just, it was nice to sort of, you know, have that attention but i love like i love it i love it because it just makes me want to work even harder it makes me want to perform even better because i've got all these eyes on me because i've got all these people you know talking and like you know you want to live up to everything so you're you're even that more excited and ready to to go and put on uh, so, uh some of these performances like like you said the light heavy division sort of it, it's always need you know they've said for a long time that it's not as deep but i mean look you've got a wealth of ta you've had a wealth of talent before guys like me and and prohaska got into the got into the mix and there's going to be even more guys i mean listen even another guy that done well in the card uh delete say uh, another another guy just been signed as well so listen the lightweight division is a stacked division if people think that you know it is not like it's been stacked for a while but you just don't hear about these people you don't know about it so now we're starting to come out now we're starting to you know and and like i say if, if i can help as well bring more attention to it then you know by all means i'm, I'm gonna go out there and uh you know do do my thing and uh and yeah bring bring back the light the life to the light heavyweight division that it once had you know in 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 his days you know with Chuck Liddell and, and and Ortiz and stuff like that yeah, it's a changing of the guard. That's kind of the way I look at it. We're seeing some of the, you know, guys like yourself. You mentioned Yuri as well. I think that's sort of what people are looking at, especially after seeing that type of win you had there. Um, you talked about wanting to get right back in there. I met you seem like you're you're you came out unscathed. Uh, so so ideal time to to get back in there. Do you sort of have a timetable in your head? Yeah. So um, I'm looking to get back on the next Fight Island card. So I mean, if that's September, from what I've been hearing a lot, then hell yeah, I'd like to get back in there. I'm always training. I'm always in shape. I'm always trying to improve. So no, it doesn't matter when. Like right now, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready, like, to go at, at any point. I mean, listen, I had to nurse a bit of an injury, which I had, you know, uh, previous uh, prior to the fight. Uh, that now I'm actually t able to take time to sort of, you know, ice it, rest it, and, and take the antibiotics that I need to take and stuff like that, which I wasn't able to do beforehand. So uh, I'm lucky and able to do that, and it's healing up well. So yeah, I reckon within the next week I'll be back into full training, and I'll, I'll be, like I said, I'll be back ready to go. I mean. 
like I said before, when, when you get that feeling of being in the cage and being under those lights, you just want to do it again. And, and not only that, work my way up the ranks and, you know, help feed my family and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, try and get some more, some more bonuses. Cause you know, I said for, for, for the longest time that, you know, to my mom and dad, I said, uh, I'll get them the 50 grand bonus, you know, to help out of everything. And, you know, I, I you know, to be able to finally say to them, i had done it. Like I, I told you I was going to do it. I, you know, I, I kept my promise. Um, you know, that means a lot to me. Uh, I think giving to people that have helped you for, for so long, like that, that is a feeling in itself like no other. So, you know, I want to keep being able to make performances like that to not only help, you know, myself and, you know, like to give the things that I, I don't, you know, to help everyone around me and all my family and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, if September, if September is a green light for Fight Island card, obviously, I definitely want to get on it. That'll be a conversation that I have with my manager. But like I say, I'll, I'll be ready to go uh, as soon as this leg gets sealed up. How is it, by the way, having a manager based in the U.S.? Uh, Jason's on top of everything, but uh, how, how has that been? Because I, I know for a lot of U.K. fighters, that's not the case. They have someone based uh, on the same time zone. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been a massive blessing. Uh, he's he's a truly amazing guy. Everyone part of the team is amazing. They Just like the UFC takes care of the fighters, uh, Jason and, and his whole team take care of us amazing. Anything we need, anything we need to do, he's got it done to the T. Like literally no no, no troubles. Also, he talks to my dad all the time if I need it. Literally talks to me whenever I need it. I literally I message him like early hours in the morning and stuff like that. Even when, you know, get to meet him for the first time and stuff like that nothing's a problem like 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 i say him being in america is is a good thing because now he's he's right in the midst of it right where the mma hub is is in in america so him being right here and stuff like that is is amazing but obviously finally getting to meet him was was quite a quite an amazing thing in itself we get on so well you know like like you know you can see like the emotion how much he cares about what he does and about his athletes and you know i feel the same towards him i feel like i have that same you know, I care about him as well. So I think you need someone like that to be looking after you, looking out for your career, uh, just because it, it, it just makes everything that much better. And like I say, the roller coaster that will go on it, they're all going in there with you with it. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, it, it's, it's amazing having a guy like that. And uh, I can't wait for what the future holds for us. Uh, any opponents you're looking at next? I know that, you know, first fight in the UFC just got a win, but uh, do you have your eye on anyone in, at 205? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, I think Roman Delice had an amazing fight uh, in his debut. Uh, you know, had a really good showing. I think that would be a very interesting matchup. Uh, uh, like, like I say, I would love to test myself against that guy. Another guy who's won. Another guy, you know, who, who, who's seen now quite highly in the media and stuff like that, and, and you know, made like quite, quite a big noise. So, same thing. I would like to do that. Ideally, it is my goal to work my way up the ladder, fight by fight you know, take the appropriate steps, be smart about it. That's why I got my manager with me, helping me throughout the whole process. So whatever he says, obviously, at the end of the day, I'll do whatever it takes to sort of get myself towards that top 15 and, and you know, work my way up the ranks and keep getting better and keep keep improving. Um, but yeah, like I say, that's that's probably the, a, a name that stands out to me in terms of, you know, I'd, I'd like to go in there and fight a guy like that because it would be a very, I know it would be a very entertaining fight uh, for all the fans. Obviously, you've had some travel going back and forth to Abu Dhabi, getting back home. Uh, what, what do you like doing on your downtime? Like, what do you do to keep yourself occupied on the plane? I know you're sleeping, but are you a podcast guy? Are you watching movies? Are you playing video games? What do you like doing outside of the cage? Um, to be honest, I do a lot of. Uh, I do like when I was on the plane. Like, as as an example, I, I I listen. I'm a I'm a big guy on like sort of listening to music and visualizing stuff. I don't know. It's it's something that like when you think about stuff in the future that you want like good things to happen and like you listen to good music behind it, it sort of just gives you that more of that motivation. Like I can take about an hour or two out of my day just to do that. I mean, listen, I love a good film. I love a bit of Harry Potter. I watched that on the, on, on the flight, uh, on the flight back from, from Abu Dhabi. So Harry Potter was a, was, was, was a big thing to, for me to watch. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like watching fight, fight films. So yeah, like I said, I like I like visualizing, and listening to music. That, that 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 that's a big thing, and I'm a big talker, as you can tell. Obviously, making my, my job like, easy, love it. Do you know what I mean? So I mean, listen, I had I had like my uh, training partner right next to me, um, and and we we literally we, we could at least we could we could burn time just talking for about an hour hour and a half. And I know my girlfriend sometimes gets annoyed with me about that, but um, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's another thing. 
Modestus, thank you so much for taking the time, man. Great getting to catch up with you finally. You're a guy I've wanted to interview for a while, so I'm glad it all uh, worked out today. Uh, if you got any sponsors or social media or anything you want to plug, any thank yous, I'll give you the last word. All right, so uh, M-O-D-Y-B-24 is my Instagram. Um, M-O-D-E-S-T-A-S and then uh, B-U-K-A-U-S-1 is my Twitter. Um, my Facebook is just my name, Modestus Bukowskis. Uh, another bit of a bit, bit of a long-winded one for you lot. Um, I've got to thank a couple of people. Distinct Physiotherapy. Listen, without without that, I wouldn't be able to get into that cage with two weeks of having a bad, you know, ha- having a bit of an injury leading up to the fight. So I've got to thank Leanne. Absolutely amazing job. If you're around the Radler area, go check her out. Uh, Mauler MMA. That man has been with me, you know, since since a, a long time in the journey, and he's still helping me, and he's still doing a lot, and he's an amazing guy. Fighter Shop UK. Another big um, um, brand brand that's helping me right now. Um, I've, I've got to thank all my training partners and like my dad and like Denison, Danny, BST, you know, Legion Grappling. Um, all, my, all, my, all my training partners. Like, like I had a wealth of people just come and help me all the time. Like you know, putting themselves on the line just to make me better, and I can't thank them enough. I've, I've had so many amazing people. You know, Hodge Gracie's Academy, Millhill BJJ, Ed Ingemels. You know. Like I said, there's so many names out there that that like, it'll be a massive list. I've had too many people, too many people help me out all, all, all the time. And and uh, all I can say is that right now I'm on the road to make it to the top. And all the people who have helped me, you know who you are. You're the ones who are getting me to that next level and helping me get to the top. Got to give a massive shout out to Jason House and everyone part of Iridium Sports Agency. Uh, listen, they took a mass, amazing care of me. And I can't wait for what the future holds for us. Uh, we're we're going to go in and smash it. Um, but yeah, man, extremely grateful, extremely blessed. Uh, can't say nothing other than that. We, uh, we're just going to keep moving forward and keep rising to the top all together.